The sons and daughters of the Windrush generation suffered at the hands of institutional racism. An unofficial colour bar effectively meant that many mainstream entertainment venues did not welcome those with a black Caribbean background. So for them, blues parties and sound system dances offered a welcome place of refuge. One of my best friends, he lived like four houses away. And um, his father had a sound system. It was called Lord Barley Sound. And every Saturday there was blues dances. And we could hear the music. Like I was in my bedroom, I could hear the bass coming down the street, you know. I used to be fascinated by sound systems. I mean, living in Brixton, you know, you're trying to go to sleep at night and you're hearing every night there seemed to be a blues dance and you can hear it from miles off. The reality of the situation is there was so much racism at that time. Um, you couldn't go to certain clubs as black people, you know, so they had to kind of do their own entertainment. So they congregated in some houses on Saturday nights and, you know, sometimes the children are upstairs, you know, sleeping. God, the beers make you sleep, you know. So I used to say to my, my friend, I said, um, one day we're going to have to have a sound system ourselves, you know. And it just so happened that the father passed down that sound to the son. So we had a sound system while we were still at school, you know. Most times we would just plan to just sneak out at nights and, and, and try to get into one of the blues, you know. It was, it was usually some old shack downstairs, some old basement. Or Most times we were, it was noticeable that we weren't supposed to be there. Sometimes the guys would just say, yeah, all right, all right. And that's how I experienced the sound system vibe, because I just used to stand up and listen. And even when we first started to DJ on the microphone, we were like news readers, you know? It's like when we start talking about certain things which are happening in society and even on the news and all those kind of things. And the response and the reaction, the people went crazy, you know, because they could identify with what I was talking about, you know? Because of the, let's say, the political climate at the time, because we're talking 80s, 1980s we're talking about, the, the climate at the time, we felt very secluded from society. We felt we were under attack. So the sound system and the blues dances were our little space, our utopia within music, and um, places we could voice our opinions, places we could gather without feeling isolated. And it was very tough for most black youths in London, all around the country at the time, not just London. So the blues dances were very important to us. It was, it was more than just going to a dance. It was a community thing. It was um, linking up with your friends. Even here in the daily news, our daily news, it was like getting letters from Jamaica as well. So we could keep up with what's going on back home. You know, it was more than just a dance. It was a social vibration. You get to see your bridges and find out what's going on. You know, obviously dress up. Everybody likes to dress up. And it was an escape from what our reality was. Unemployed, harassed by police, bad housing, you know, bad education, all of this stuff. So the dances was our relief. The Rastafari influence within it, you know, kind of gave me an identity as a black youth born in England, growing up in England, facing racism, facing the National Front and all these kind of things, you know. And, People like Enoch Powell was the, the MP, and yeah, he did the Rivers of Blood speech and all those kind of things. So you can imagine what it was like in Wolverhampton, you know, and as a youth growing up, the only thing is, there was a lot of us, you know, like from um, Jamaican parentage, you know, and like unity was kind of like a strength towards us, you know, and and I think the racism, it kind of, it kind of brought us together even more. And we were like the first generation born in the UK. So we were the ones who had to defend it, you know, and our parents, they came, they didn't want no trouble, you know. Social issues, that start affecting you, innit? I mean, for me, like, racial issues were affecting me from, I was a little child from my start school, tell the truth, you know what I mean? I was getting ab abused racially and stuff like that. So that's the thing. When I started listening to the records, that energy of, of um, protest and some singing of liberation and stuff like that, I, I got it. I got it. For me, it was amazing. I remember he bought um, Rastaman Vibration. That's a, maybe the first LP that I, I sat and listened to. I must have been about, I don't know, I probably was about eight or something. But Rastaman Vibration LP, like from the sleeve to the music, it was amazing.
up and down the country, Britain's inner cities resonated to the sounds of reggae music played on powerful, hand-built speaker systems. These mobile discos, inspired by their counterparts in the Caribbean, are called sound systems. All, all you can think about is it being rampack full and it's um, smoke infested and it's hot. I remember walking into this smoky, hazy hall and this time Shaka had set up on the stage. Yeah, it just boxes all around the wall. As far as you could see, there was no wall, there was just speakers. Yeah, that was, um, say, my first major experience of going into a big dance and feeling at home and saying, yeah, this is where I'm meant to be. It's the, it's the, uh, it's the feeling of BS coming at you from all angles, you know? And it's not just BS, it's, it's pressure in you. It's that, what I did love. You know, when he puts on the first tune and you get that sizzle of the tops, you know, you hear that, you know, and then the mid-range sort of comes in and stuff and it's like you're starting to recognise the tune and you think, yeah, you know. And then, you know, suddenly the bass turns up and, oh boy, <laughs> you know, that's just the next level experience, you know what I mean? There, there is nothing like presenting roots music but a, but a dub sound, but a big sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I slowly became hooked until the point where I was actually began to sing on the sound system. So I'd go in and sing, you know, um, Don't Let It Go To Your Head, Black Harmony. That was the first song that I ever sung on a sound system. And then I started singing um, Brown Sugar, I'm So Proud, our reggae music. Um, those were my sound system theme songs. Everybody got used to me singing it. So every week people would come and listen to me sing those songs in, in, in the dance. The, the eagerness, the, the joy of getting up and putting on your clothes as quick as you can, putting on your shoes as quick as you can to race to the record shop because you know so that every 10 minutes you're losing a selection of music that's played in the record shop. And even though you're at the back, your, your hand signal will, will, will tell the man so that, you know, put one of those under the counter for me. And that's how it was. But you know, the later you go to record shop, is, is in, in probably play a batch of music that you never did here and you miss those. I would say that, yeah, Lover's Rock was a UK thing. The scene to be in. We performed wonders with UK Lover's Rock at the time, you know. Um, and it was a great era. It was a great time for UK Lover's Rock. Yeah, we were being played on radio stations, on legal stations, a couple of legal stations, you know what I mean? And we were getting a lot of support. Sound system dances held in local schools, community centres and church halls often involved clashes where sound systems would compete against each other to see who had the loudest sound, the latest tunes and the best MCs. We used to play all over the place. Different, anywhere you could find a hall or a school. We used to, I remember one time when the, the highest the school you can hear this rattling, windows rattling, and that's where you knew, oh, it's over there, sort of thing. And you used to go in there and then just, just skank. He says, it was all about dancing and skanking, and it was about music, number one, skanking, number two. You used to go there with a bag full of juice, apple juice, orange juice, your own mixed juice, cassette recorders, you know what I mean, towels, tracksuit. The first time we had all the speakers set up in our living room and um, turned on the different boxes one by one, first the tops and then the mids and then the bass. And when they all came in together, it just sounded so sweet. And it was like, it was a tingle down the spine, you know, suddenly realizing that we had this, this power to play music wherever we wanted and in whichever way we wanted. You had the top tier of sounds like Shaka, Fat Man, Coxon, Quaker, Baron from Manchester. I grew up in those clash dances, you know, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a planned thing. I mean, it's it's never um, on the flyer that this is going to be a clash and whatever. You just put two sounds together, it's automatically turned into a clash. 
and we're talking about like six days a week. It's like um, people was craving to go to dance. No, it ain't like that. But people did crave, they want to go to a dance, so they're looking for places to go. Because it's um, competition based. You can you, you start to um, understand what's going on between the two sounds. You start to understand the lingo, and what, and what they mean, what they say this, what they mean, what they say that. It's a competition, it's a clash. That time he had a mic man called Dirty Harry. He had a lyrics about him. Um, they call us Jatubbies, the leader of the rough, tough and dread. They say that I'm extremely dangerous public enemy number one. I listened to that and I thought, wow, tough, tough. So Keith played a tune called Hooligan. As everyone knows it as Hooligan 69. So I, so I asked Keith, you know, could I hold the mic and ting? So yeah, Harry gave me the mic and ting and I done a little thing, hooligan, hooligan, where you gonna run when Jatubbies come? After I done it, Keith looked at me and said, we're playing Sheffield next week, do you wanna come? I thought, oh yeah, I don't mind, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm gonna be riding in the front of the van and all that. Nah, get in the back, mate. <laughs> I didn't realise how far Sheffield was. You know, I knew that going into the back of the van and travelling with the boxes wobbling all over your head was the way to go. That was it. That's how you got to the next venue. So it just had to be, hopefully, that nothing dropped on your head, basically. A couple of boxes dropped off many few times, but I was lucky not to be getting caught. <laughs> The sound system scene has grown extensively since its first arrival via the Windrush generation, influencing many music genres including house, rave, jungle, dubstep and grime. Sound systems are now a global movement with a more diverse crowd tuned into the sound system frequency. Seeing Josh Shaka play in um in the foyer of Brixton Academy and it was the first sound system I'd ever seen proper sound and first time I'd seen Josh Shaka as well and I was just blown away by the whole thing like obviously the sound and the bass itself but but also the the DIY nature of of how it was all running and how those different guys on the mic jumping on and the improvisation part of that um, and also struck by Josh Shaka's massive belief in what he was doing it was so clear that he was completely into it there was no pretense like this was his life uh i think my very 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 first session that actually big 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 session i went to was when shaka came and played in hackney in a place called cubies cubies was uh it was two clubs it was four races and cubies it was because the four races complex as we knew it was a massive big theatre that was in Hackney. Yeah, that was 1978. That was mind-changing, that was, because um, to go to a, a session and... Russ has always intrigued me as a child. So to be able to go out to a session now where it's just pure Rustas. Saxon and Shaka played in Community Centre. It was a funny dance that because you had, you, had, you, had, you had Saxon followers and you had Shaka followers. Yeah. Every time Saxon played, other steppers man then walked out and then Saxon man was staying there and all, every time Shaka played the man was in there stepping so it was, a, it was a funny dance that way I remember that dance really good because it was contrast you know what I mean because if I Saxon by himself wicked it's all liquid 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 tip of eye around the man them Papa Levi the works bad and then you had Shaka the warrior at that time they were both on top Saxon was on top and Shaka was on top one of the dances I really remember was in Leicester and we played against Saxon and then Saxon at that time was the number one sound you know because they had all the DJs like Tipper and Papa Levi and even Maxi Priest and all of them was among Saxon and thing and I think there was me and Sister Dan you know we were chatting on what's if I saw and, and uh, we did really good in the dance and you know, mash up Saxon in the dance and other people and I said yeah man what's if I take that dance there you know and so we decided you know what we're going to drive up we parked the lorry on the park about six o'clock in the morning. We 
just left it in the bar, went back to Barber's ass, got up about 11 o'clock, got a generator delivered. Yeah, we played till two o'clock in the morning. And the only reason why we stopped because the generator ran out of diesel. So otherwise, we would have just kept playing. Like, the police never came and said nothing to us. People just got their cars and just turned on the headlights and that. So, boy, it was just like a circle of cars with headlights. It was a original Channel 1 in Leeds, back in Leeds, by the way. Rasparta, Emperor, Ambassador, Genesis. No sound in Leeds, too many sounds, in fact. Every street had a sound system. But my sound back in the day was like Magnum 45. There was like the more of the stepper sound, because when you're you, man, you just can hit you to step. So that was our sound system them, them time there. In Hackney, we had a lot of sounds in Hackney. We had Phoebe's, Cubies, we had Four Races. We had places like All Nations. We had a lot of landmark clubs in Hackney. Quaker was one of those. I mean, it, it, it was... Um, Semi-militant in himself, you know, he, 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 he used to stamp his authority, especially out of town. He used to love to stamp his authority out of town. Yeah.